We are gathered here today for a very special occasion, namely to mark the graduation of the class of 2017. I want to start by giving thanks to all of the teachers who have taught you, and most of all, to that one particular teacher, that one particular lady, Ms. Finlayson. Is your glass half full or half empty? 
I want you to remember that you are not only the leading actors in your lives. You are the creators. You are the writers. Sometimes things will go swimmingly, and it will be easy to see that the sun is shining a day like today. And sometimes you might have a spring that never gets warm and the sun barely shines. You will have both the good and the bad, but it will be you who decide, who determines the outcome. Viktor Frankl was a 20th century Austrian neurologist and psychiatrist, as well as a Holocaust survivor. In the 1930s, the early 30s, he was a successful doctor, writer. He opened a clinic for, to help people who were clinically depressed. And then in 1938, the Nazis took over Austria. Frankel, along with his wife Tilly, his mother Elsa, and his brother Walter were taken to a terrible concentration camp called Auschwitz. Tilly, Elsa, and Walter did not survive. Frankel was the only one who did survive, and this is what he had to say. Everything you have in life can be taken from you except one thing, your freedom to choose how you will respond to the situation. This is what determines the quality of the life we've lived, not whether we've been rich or poor, famous or unknown, healthy or suffering. What determines our quality of life is how we relate to these realities. What kind of meaning we assign them, what kind of attitudes we cling to about them, what state of mind we allow them to trigger. And then he said, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. So to close, who do you want to be? May your cup runneth over. May your lives be filled with joys and blessings and good fortune. But however it may be, may your glass always be at least half filled. Thank you. So um, this has been the hardest speech I've ever tried to write, and I didn't really succeed. <laughs> I really can't describe what is in my heart and thoughts today. Uh, I can't encompass eight years of real growth and struggle and joy and sorrow and learning in a speech, especially a short one so that my class has time to present those speeches to you. I want to pay tribute to the parents of the students in my class, to their kindness to me, their strength, their honesty to me over the years, and their generosity that made me feel so supported in this really difficult and important work. I want to pay tribute to my colleagues who shared their wisdom, who are all on a true quest for the greatest good, and who challenged me and helped me grow and really supported me over the last eight years. And also who supported the class. They really love the students and they give their best to the students and it's been a joy to work with them. I feel really grateful for the board at Ashwood who has given so much time and effort and thought to making our course run smoothly as a school. And in some ways, most importantly, besides my final thing, is my total gratitude for the beauty of me, for the sea that I've been surrounded by, for the snowstorms and the rainstorms, for the owls and ravens and the beautiful blue skies, for the foxes and the bird song and the flowers, and for the dark, dark, star-filled nights that have just warmed my heart for the last eight years. But the thing I really need to talk about, and that I really can't talk about in any poetic way, I don't have the poetry for it, is this class. The 12 who sit here on the stage and are graduating from Ashwood today, and also the two who I hope are in the audience who will be graduating from their own schools in the week or weeks to come. 
There's no way for me to describe how much they've given me and who they are. They remind me of hawks flying overhead and I try to say, look at the curve of that beak or look at the wingspan or look at the beautiful tail. And the hawk looks down and says, you haven't captured me. You don't know me at all. So I can only say that as you watch them and see them and listen to them today on the stage, I hope you begin to see how incredibly rich my life has been. They are each a treasure to me. They're each a mystery to me. They're each like a flame, like a champion, a true champion of truth. And they're as complex and exciting and interesting as any miracle that nature has to show us. I've watched a lot of them blossoming as sweet, fierce, healthy little seedlings and growing over the years and flowering into really the prime of youth with great integrity and great independence and true artistry, questing for perfection and for the best time they can possibly have. The class has shifted and changed over the years, but always it's been a striving, struggling, artistic, and tremendously humorous group of people. So I feel very fortunate to have spent as much time with them as they have had to spend with me for the last few years. So I want to close by saying something to all of you but to them, so that all of you hear. But it's for you too, I suppose. So, Jasper, and Morgan, and Jacob, Sophia, Kayla, Daniel, Lisa, Ocean, Isaiah, Eli, Fiona, Sylvan. The world will try to tell you how to be and who to be, but I want you to know that as far as I can see, you have everything that the world needs. You can walk into your present and your future full of confidence that the world needs who you are. And you have the ability to be true to yourselves, to be yourselves, to do what is right and meaningful, and with full confidence step into what the world has to offer you. As Scuppers, I think, might say, or he would certainly bark, you have the solid compass you need to set a true course and to take your journey. So it's with a full heart that I wish you a great journey. And I know you will have one, and I hope to be able to follow you in your course through life, and wherever I go next, you will always be in my heart. So thank you so much. No flash photography, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight grades. It's the Ashwood Commandments. It's the Ashwood Commandments. Number one, in chorus, we demand satisfaction. If they don't notice, just use your lips and catch them. shirt inside out. <laughs>�����������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������������
number six, keep a note for the next grade. Tell them how you've been, Fred Newman, that they always win. Seven, confess your sins right before the moment when you graduate, when you're finally a proponent. Grade eight, last chance to graduate. Finish your lesson, see if we can solve all these debates. Yuna, Caleb, sir, can we agree that debates are dumb and immature? Sure, but you all have to answer for your words, sir. With our lives, we both know that's absurd. Hang on, how many of us cry because our clothes got muddy and ruined? Okay, so we're doing this. Number nine, I look you in the eyes and no higher. Something all the courage you require. Then count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, grade now, we graduate! Also very competitive, 
We had very intense games of the tag game, Rochambeau, and one day, Caleb accidentally chased him into a rock, and he split his chin open. <laughs> no one made us, and still makes us laugh more than Jacob. Jacob, who knows what you are going to do? You are so good at so many amazing things. Cello was formed. Sophia, Elsa, Leah, Ocean. The unstoppable girls. Yet this caused some issues. Sylvan felt excluded, and Cello was shut down shortly after. <laughs> two nights at Tyler Yentis' farm, helping with the garden and animals. We sang songs while stacking wood and plugged noses while making cheese. We all knew our times tables well by third grade. Third grade was a fun year, but unfortunately it had to end and everyone was another grade older. Fourth grade, we moved upstairs and a new kid came and went this year. Yona. He only came for the fun classes. It wasn't fair. <laughs> But he started coming more often, and soon there were two boys with long, long locks in our class. Fourth grade was eventful. We got to make our animal dioramas. I told people over and over that moose was, in fact, plural of moose. I wrote a short story about a ruby-throated hummingbird named Buzz. It was, um, interesting. Fifth grade. We did the pentathlon this year. We competed in five events. Javelin, discus, sprint, long jump, and ring wrestling. We also did a dance and wrote oaths to the Greek gods. Isaiah, also known as Zayzay Bops or Zayzay Tops, joined our class. <laughs> he could sing, dance, meditate, and perform Reiki. Wow. <laughs> he was the leader of our Morris dancing and a wizard in math class. Where did this kid come from? Isaiah's sayings were very unique. We made a page of Isaiah quotes, some of which were, Why is life so hard? Why can't it just be a granola bar? <laughs> And, ooh, ouch, I almost touched a thorn, but I didn't, but I felt the pain. <laughs> Isaiah, we are so lucky you joined our class. You will do amazing things in the future. For the first half of fifth grade, I decided to go to public school. It was okay, I made some new friends. But I miss my classmates and the education at Ashwood so much, I came back after Christmas break. We took a trip to Boston and had dinner at the Dosa Temple. <laughs> <laughs> Their food was terrible. Their service was slow. The waiters were rude. After the Dosa Temple, we calmed ourselves by giving candle offerings to Ganesha at a non-restaurant Indian temple. Sixth grade. This year, Yona joined officially. We had two new kids in the class along with Yona, Eli Moore and Morgan McDougall. They both started out very, very, very quiet. <laughs> Eli was a shy, timid boy. At the time, we didn't know he would turn out to be an opinionated sassafras. <laughs> in a good way. Back then, he always held the door open with a big grin on his face as if he were up to something. But he wasn't. He still does that now. He knew all the details of the first revolutionary period and of World War I and II. Eli Beli became his nickname, and we couldn't be more happy he joined our class. Eli, thanks for being yourself, a kind, funny, generous human being. I was nervous but thrilled when a new jo girl joined our class. It took me a while to get used to Morgan, but I'm positive she felt the same. Her amazing personality blew me away. Morgan was and is an essential part of our class. I can't wait to see the wonderful things she does in the future. Morgan, you are an amazing, confident, beautiful, loved young woman. You have taught me so many life lessons, and I will miss seeing you every single day. This year, we performed our first big middle school play, Pirates of Penzance. The final performance was successful with very few mistakes. We learned about the discoveries of the ancient Romans, and each of us did a geography project on a European country. I don't know how many times I heard the European joke. <laughs> I did German, and Sophia, she did Finland. Our recess sports were tackle football in the snow and intense games of ultimate frisbee. Some tears were shed. We had chorus with the 7th and 8th graders who welcomed us with open arms. Seventh grade came, and we had two more years of Ashwood. In seventh grade, another boy joined our class. <laughs> His name was, and of course, still is, Acer. The first day of school, he corrected Miss Finlayson. We were all amazed and terrified what would happen. 
he said something along the lines of, actually, Miss Finlayson, the proper name of the magical, beautiful flower of Lithuania is the jungle blossom, or something like that. He is one of the smartest people I know, and I know a lot of people. Hey, sir, we are going to be a world-changing person, and I know it will be a good change. We all channeled our love for Shakespeare, which didn't exist at the time, and we all played Twelfth Night. We were all assigned to build toothpick bridges, so we split the teams and started designing. For the record, my team held the most weight at the end, and we also got the most beautiful bridge award. We made Renaissance paintings and perspective drawings. We studied human physiology. There were many giggles in the classroom that week. The downside of seventh grade is we were sad to lose Elsa and Leah, who unfortunately had to leave Ashwood. Only three girls now. Eighth grade, this year was unforgettable. Just thinking about the memories we made this year makes me overwhelmed with emotion. We are now 12 peas in a pot, Miss Finlayson being the shell, keeping us all together. This year, an uncountable amount of inside jokes were formed as we got more and more comfortable with each other. We tend to ar argue quite a bit about sports teams, whether or not witches can be male, Quebec or Quebec, how tall ducks are, can malls be outside or is that a plaza, and much more. <laughs> Our trip on the Janney Rigan made us closer than ever. We played poker, raced with anchor and sails, cooked food, and laughed our heads off. When 8th grade came to an end, we realized how fast our years at Ashwood had gone by. Ms. Finlayson always said this to us since first grade. You'll find out before you graduate from 8th grade. So I guess we found out everything we wanted to know by now. Ashwood has been our second home for so long, and now we are leaving. I know this is cheesy, but I'm going to say it anyway. I will miss everything about everyone next year, even though they drive me insanely crazy that all the time. Like, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> to all those Ashwood kids out there, I want to tell you to enjoy your years here. You're luckier than you think. And before you know it, you're going to be up here where we are now. Ms. Finlayson, I'm just going to say this. I'm so glad you put up with us for all these years. We couldn't have asked for a better teacher, and I really mean that. We couldn't be more thankful. Thank you. We love you. Hello, everyone. My name is Isaiah Doble, and as many of you probably know, students of Ashwood learn and rehearse plays in school and then perform them for the public every year. It was a big part of my Ashwood experience, and the journey of each and every play will always be in my heart. In my first year of Ashwood, in fifth grade, we performed Jason and the Argonauts. In this play, I played the role of Orpheus, a renowned musician. I enjoyed being part of this play with my new classmates and felt like after the performances, I evolved as an actor. The next play was when we joined the rest of the middle school to perform Pies and Penzance by Gilbert and Sullivan. In this play, I was the very model of the modern major general. <laughs> this definitely was a challenging wonderful experience for me that inspired me to get deeper into the theatrical world, as I never had such a big and comical part in my life. After the shows, I felt much closer to my classmates and the rest of the middle school than I would have been without the play, and I was very grateful for the experience we had together. Next year, the 7th and 8th grade teamed up to tackle the well-known Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. In this play, I was a lovesick Duke of Illyria Orsino. This was a very difficult role for me to become, but it was a very fun process nonetheless. The lines were also very hard to learn and memorize, since none of us knew a word of Shakespeare. Although this was a very frustrating experience for some of us, <laughs> it was still very fun to perform with a Shakespeare tongue in such a dramatic and unique setting. We were all very grateful to be steered in the right direction in this turbulent storm by such wonderful people and directors, Laura Purdom, Leslie Finlayson, and Beverly Scott, as well as everyone else who contributed their time and effort to help us with our plays. For our final play in eighth grade, after a long series of discussions, arguments, and out-of-hand debates, we ended up choosing the Russian play called The Government Inspector by Nikolai Gogol. I was very excited to be given the role of a nervous and jittery superintendent of schools. And although we were sad to see the former 8th grade and their teacher, who was also our main director, go, we were so lucky to have the wonderful Ms. Finlayson be in our class and take on the gigantic task of play director and the stunning Beverly Scott to give us the assistance and confidence we needed to fully prepare us, like the previous years. After performing a musical and a Shakespeare play, we 
we thought this was going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> However, this was not the case. This play was another big hurdle since it took place in the 1850s in Russia. This meant we had to completely cleanse out every ounce of the 21st century American teenager out of us and become 19th century Russian men and women. Sorry for the bad accent. I actually found this fun to forget about your life's worries, except to remember your cues and lines, and just be a whole different character, even for only a couple hours. Another comfort we had before was having older greens to help us out in our acting and be part of a cast. But now there's only 12 of us, and we only had each other to rely on and work with, which was good for us in the end, since it raised our group teamwork and trust. After every rehearsal and performance, I felt us evolve as individuals and as a group. I had so much fun giving my characters personality and backstories, and then transforming into them. I'm extremely grateful for the experience we have had and all the things I've learned from them that I'll keep in mind for the rest of my life. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Morgan MacDougall, and with some help, I'm going to talk about my first ever experience with Ashley Baldwin School. As some of you know, I joined in sixth grade, but I visited in fifth. Before ever seeing Ashwood, I was a shy, yes, shy, 11-year-old who was tired of, of reading textbooks and having hours of homework. So, on spring break, my family got in the car and drove nine hours from New Jersey so I could visit. I walked through the door, legs shaking, heart pounding, and a guaranteed thought in my head that I was not going to go here next year. I mean, no matter how hard my parents tried to convince me, I was sure of where exactly I wanted to go to school and it was not Ashwood. I mean, at 11 years old, you know everything, right? Anyway, I was led by Miss Van Laysen <laughs> to a locker and was told to take off my shoes. Okay then, I removed my shoes and walked into the classroom to find that I was the only student in the room, probably the school, to not be wearing shoes. I can only imagine what the other students were thinking. Who's the weird girl not wearing shoes? <laughs> First, we went outside and threw javelins. I mean, javelin throwing class in school? Completely serious, a thought crossed my mind. Are they training the kids to hunt? <laughs> but I quickly learned that they were training for the pentathlon, and I was sad that I would miss it. So everyone throws the javelin flying forward at least a few yards, maybe more. But me? I have never, ever thought that I would need the skill for school visits. But I still chucked it with all my might, and it landed a few feet away from me, pathetically. I figured everyone was thinking, Wow, she's terrible. <laughs> Next class, woodworking. It was fun until some of the boys decided to rub sandpaper on their heads so they turned red. <laughs> this time, I was the one thinking, huh, why would they do that? <laughs> During recess, both snack and lunch, we played hide and seek tag. I came from a, from a school in which, outside, was a black top and guardrail. So you can imagine my excitement when I was told that we were allowed to roam the woods. All the girls played, and two boys. I think one of them was named David or Jacob, and the other was named either Silver or Sylvie or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, long story short, I got tagged first because I forgot about the tag aspect of hide and seek tag. Did they not have hide and seek tag in New Jersey? <laughs> I had so much fun that day, even though I was beyond terrified. And to everybody else in the class, it was just a normal school day. <laughs> but to me, it was more. Now, I told you our schedule those two days and what I was sure that everyone was thinking of me. But what I have not told you is what come out of, came out of those two days for me. A student gave me a card telling me how much she hoped to see me next year. I exchanged emails with Sophia, and we talked all throughout the summer. And according to my parents, even though I had no memory of this, I cried when I was told I could not visit for another day. I have thought a lot about how just over three years ago, these people that now play a huge role in my life were just strangers. I sometimes wonder what my life would have been like if I did not go to Ashwood and did not meet all these people. 
but I have seen them walking down the street and not even acknowledge them. I can't imagine my old life without all 11 and the Spinlayson of all these people on stage with me. Every single person here, I will cherish all the memories I have of them for the rest of my life, and I hope there are many more to come. Thank you. Now, if you didn't think things could get any better, in eighth grade, we combined the two. 
meaning we were able to stay for two nights and three days, and also we got to use an indoor and outdoor course, which was amazing. During these three visits, I feel like everyone conquered something in them. For instance, I, and maybe some others, conquered parts of their fears of heights. Overall, I think it was a great experience, and I'm pretty sure everyone can agree with me. This year, we went for a two-day, one-night trip to Boston. Now, we did go for a similar trip in fifth grade, but may I just say, I'm pretty sure everyone enjoyed the eighth grade Boston trip there. So, I'll be talking about that one. We started by riding in the car for three and a half hours to Boston. When we got there, we took the subway from our parking garage to Harvard Square. After that, we went and, went and explored the Peabody Museum, where we examined stuffed animals, like real stuffed animals. <laughs> we also examined medieval weapons and much more. When we were done with that, we took a stroll around the city. We stopped and played a few frisbee games in a park that we came across. Of. We then made our way to Jasper's grandmother's house, where we had dinner and entertained ourselves by playing pool and watching a basketball game. Then, after a very late night, we woke up and had a delicious breakfast. After that, we drove to the, a parking garage and strolled over to the subway, where we rode to the aquarium. For me, this was the highlight of the trip because I love seeing all the animals, even though I'm scared of mostly all. <laughs> after that very fun experience, we stopped at the Quincy Market to have lunch. After munching on lots of food, we some and led us on a tour of the Freedom Trail. And I'm going to be completely honest, I think I would have liked it a little more if I had gotten more than four hours of sleep the night before. <laughs> we then walked to the subway where we rode back to our cars. Then it was sadly time to leave. We all got into our cars and drove three and a half hours back to Ashland. I had so much fun with this trip, and I'm pretty sure it will stick in my head for a very long time. Talk about the Genie River. At the end of May, my class and I went on a seven days tour trip on the Genie River for Penobscot Bay. Now, I've been on boats of all sizes and even lived on an island for 10 years, but this trip surpassed all of my best memories and experiences. By the second day, I knew this, one, this trip was going to, go on to, to be my favorite. I loved this trip because I got to do nothing and everything at the same time. And hanging out with my friends and playing games and hauling a banter and raising sets. The last two were very hard work. Some of our highlights were the food, and it was an amazing book. Going out on the bus with one of the crew members, going along for the first meet, which was beautiful, and hanging out with my friends. I learned so much about boats, sailing, and knots that I didn't even know existed. At the end, I did not want to leave because I was having such a great time. I would love to take this trip again in my class, as I had so much fun. I feel this is an amazing finale to end an amazing period of my life. Thank you. During the first week of eighth grade, our class took a trip to Baxter State Park to hike the tallest mountain in Maine, Mount Catawba. Our base camp for the adventure, Roaring Brook Campsite, provided a small place to pitch our tents and a place to eat, but the signs warning with bear set us all on edge. <laughs> our goal was to climb to the summit, which is accessible from multiple trails. Once there, we hoped to return on the treacherous path called Knife's Edge named for its razor-thin path with cliffs that ranged to over 100 feet on either, head, on either side. However, we didn't know what the weather had in store for us, so we could only wait and see. The day of the hike, we woke up early, and after studying a map the map, we set out for the ascent. It was a beautiful day, and there was a nice cool breeze, which kept us from getting too sweaty. It seemed like we had a great day ahead, and the morale was high. We split into two groups for the hike, because we weren't allowed to clog up the tight trails higher up on the mountain. So, after we stopped goofing around on the little rocks at the trailhead, I watched as half of our company began to climb. My group started off first, and with the warm sun on our backs, we began the steep ascent. The trail came into the summit, right where they got the cathedral trail, because of the tower-like pillars of rock it took a while to navigate. Some of the pillars were hundreds of feet tall. However, once we got closer to the summit, the going got easier. 
We got to the top and flopped down on the rocks. All of us still shocked that we had actually just climbed all the way. We had a short lunch break where we all took pictures of the ravens soaring around the beach and the beautiful scene below. You could see the miles with the green carpet of trees below and the glistening blue ponds and lakes. It was a perfect setup for a picture. We were supposed to wait for the other group to check in with them, but after an hour we decided we had to continue. And so with all of us still filled with the euphoria, we began to cross the next edge and head for the We got back to camp, but the weather had turned. We were all a little bit worried that the warriors had closed the trail, which would be extremely disappointing for those who had wanted to cross the ice edge and the other group. Whispers were exchanged and vows made not to mention the climb should they have not been able to make it. Meanwhile, when Acer's group was huddled around the fire at our campsite, my group was still working our way across the last part of the knife's edge. We could barely see 20 feet in front of us due to the wet, dense cloud that we were submerged in. Climbing wasn't for all of us, but we all helped each other out and did our best work as a team. And finally, my group reached the end of the knife's edge and started to descend Helon Taylor, a path that would lead us to the trailhead. But as the darkness crept in on us, we realized that we didn't have enough flashlights for everyone. But don't worry, this isn't another version of Lost on a Mountain in Maine. <laughs> we didn't panic, but tried to move faster, hoping to make it down before it got too dark. However, as we got within a mile of the trailhead, it became almost impossible to stay on, on the path. We took out our flashlights, but the feeble light was barely enough to keep us all on our way. Finally, we heard the bubbling stream, and we knew we were almost there. The car's bright headlights came rolling into view, and we got driven back to the campsite where we were welcomed with a cheer. We all slept very soundly that night, after such an adventurous day on the mountain. Climbing something like Lake Catan definitely taught us a lot. I learned that even with many obstacles ahead, you can still complete your goal, even if it means climbing and clambering over hundreds of rocks to get there. We all managed to get something wonderful out of the experience, even if we didn't all make it to the top. And we have told countless stories of this experience, not just around the campfire that night, but for many months that followed this adventure. All in all, I found the Catan trip very meaningful and a great way to start our eighth grade year, especially because it brought us together, as in, a, in no way other experience has before. It tightened the bond and told us together, and for the rest of the year, we have worked together as one group instead of as individuals. While we were on the mountain, everyone was so nice to each other. Nobody was judging anyone, and we were all walking and talking in harmony. What we experienced on this trip is a reflection of what we learned at Ashwood. Our school not only teaches you where to find the gnomes, but also how to be equally kind to everyone, even if they stole your block crayon. <laughs> I have learned so much at Ashwood, and I cannot imagine getting a better education anywhere else. Ashwood is unique in so many ways, and because of that, I will never forget my time there. Thank you.
his Kayla memories. I've dreamed about this moment for eight years. <laughs> Ashford has been such a big part of my life that I don't know what life will be like without him. Through all my wonderful and dramatic years in the school, the middle years, primarily fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, were the most exciting and transitional years of my life. I started fourth grade with hair down to my waist, make, making me look like a girl to practically anyone who did not know me. This made it a bit difficult to make new friends, although luckily my classmates always seemed to accept me, no matter what hair phase I might be going through. So it was a wonderful surprise when this kid named Yona came and visited the school. Yona's condition, if you will, was identical to mine. We both had long hair and everyone thought we were girls. Yona and I immediately hit it off. Between our combined interest in sports, movies, music, and Harry Potter, we had infinite things to do together and an endless amount of Lego game ideas. Hello everybody, I'm that kid Yona. <laughs> I'm the man in third grade. It was hard for me to say goodbye to Georgia, but Ashwood and everybody there, including Caleb, made me love me. Caleb and I had the most epic plays ever. And when I say epic, I mean epic. We spent hours and hours playing Lego, as well as writing songs together, working on our movie we were directing with Sylvan, and many outdoor games of the Wild West. We really first bonded on the ski hill. We both poked fun at each other. I would make fun of his tiny goggles that squeezed his face together. <laughs> <laughs> and he would joke about my gigantic pizza style of skiing. In the beginning of sixth grade, I decided to cut my hair. This was a really big move for me at the time. I didn't want it really short, so after great thought, I ended up with basically a shaggy boy. Well, actually, I cut mine first. <laughs> okay. Yona and I cut ours around the same time. <laughs> and the whole thing is a bit of a shock for everyone in the class. Okay, don't worry. We don't just plan on talking about our hair. <laughs> but you should know, this is a big change for us in those years. Another big change that year was the middle school play. In the beginning of sixth grade, we learned that our play would be Pirates of Penzance. Okay. <laughs> is what we thought. I have great passion for theater, and I was very excited to be in the play, even though I had no idea what it would be like. We soon learned our roles, and were told, we soon learned about the roles, and were told that there would be auditions. I had no idea what part I wanted, so I decided that I would just audition for all the parts and hope I get one. I had no clue who wanted to be in the play. This was my first year full time at Ashland, and I was still quite shy. I ended up going for it and auditioning for the lead role, since no one else would. After I auditioned, Caleb decided to try as well, and I was very relieved. Miss Purda offered me the role of Frederick, the pirate apprentice, and one of the main characters. I almost said no. A singing solo on stage? I did not think that I could do that. Remember, this was sixth grade. I was scared. But I was also excited, and I really dove into the part. Memorizing the lines and learning the music was basically my life that year, and the shaggy Boca look fit my part perfectly. <laughs> After the play, I had far more confidence in myself, not only in singing and music, but in life in general. One of my favorite things about Ashwood is how close everybody and every grade is. Caleb and I loved to play with the younger kids after school, passing frisbee with them, teaching them tricks, and of course, wrestling with them. Ashwood was the perfect school for me, Ms. Melissa was the perfect teacher for me, and this class was the perfect class for me. The most important thing that I learned at Ashwood is that being who you want to be is possible. You just have to work hard enough, and when you reach your goal, that it's not the end, that you can keep going, keep learning, keep living your life the way you want to. Thank you. Thank you everyone who made our time at Ashwood such an amazing experience. The teachers. Our parents. And the entire school. It has been such a blessing to be part of this community. Thank you. My name is Sylvan Eichenlob, and this right here is Jasper Berry Moore. We've known each other for 14 years, or 344 months, or roughly 10,320 days. That's a pretty long time, almost our entire lives. We were both very fat babies. So, in this photo, we have a photo from us in Michelin in 2002. A few years after that photo was taken, we had our first class together, kindergarten. 
Wow, do we have some stories for you. <laughs> so back in 2009, we had ducks that would roam around the epic playground. Daniel, Caleb, Sylvan, and I were the main herders. But herding really meant screaming and frantically waving sticks. We pretty much scared the light out of the ducks and called it organized herding. <laughs> Recess sure was a crazy time. At one point, over the course of three days, I had to go inside the sweep the classroom during recess twice. To be fair, I did stuff snow down this kid Max's shirt. <laughs> recess was the first place we started bonding with our classmates. Though sometimes we would make traps for fellow classmates too. We would dig holes and cover it with twigs and leaves. Ocean was our main victim. <laughs> but let's be real, the traps were pretty basic, and those experience led, experiences led to closer friendships and understandings of one another. Then it was time for the highly anticipated bridge crossing, where our class would leave kindergarten and cross the bridge into first grade. It would have been scarier if there was water under the bridge, but it was not a real bridge. Just our wooden wall. Crossing was one of the scariest moments of my life. But I'm pretty sure everyone in our class made it across safe and sound. The first day of first grade was exhilarating and confusing. We had to draw a straight line. First grade was fun and relaxed, mostly consisting of the line order, the woods, and the alphabet. But the most important thing we learned were social skills and how to function as a class. Then, in second grade, Daniel joined. This changed the social dynamic. The volume of the classroom went up significantly. <laughs> this wild air amused us all. In all seriousness, this was the first time our class had to adapt to a new member, something that we would continue to do through our Ashwood experience. I have this one memory from second grade that stands out. One day, it was raining and thundering, then boom, a lightning flash right in front of the window. And our little faces were smushed against the glass when it happened. Ocean and Sophia hid in the closet. That story probably never left the Brown Building. In third grade, Jacob and Leah joined us. We learned about farming that year and what it meant to be responsible. We taught us good habits. We planted out a small garden and learned that it's earth or soil, not dirt. In our fourth grade play, I was the sly Loki. I was the thunderous fool. In the play, we did not really get along. This was a twist in our friendship. We had to not get along. Something that had never been true. <laughs> Fifth grade was all about Greek mythology, which meant, you guessed it, the pentathlon. <laughs> I was really good at discus and wrestling. Here we go, Athens, here we go. <laughs> Boom. Corn was where it was at. But let's move on before it gets heated. Isaiah joined us. This year was exciting because we were getting closer and closer to becoming massive middle schoolers. We started the transition to middle school class dynamic. And then boom, we were sixth graders, which automatically made us superior to the lesser younger grades. Elon, Yona, and Morgan joined, and the female to male ratio in our class started to become even more lopsided. We also started going on the well-known middle school trips. We went to small camp. We went to small point to look at rocks. Shocker. We had some bird on the outside and raw on the inside hot dogs. <laughs> we did not we did a lot of walking, which was not super fun, but we got to relax on the beach. These trips allowed us to be a class outside of the classroom setting, getting to realize each of our own unique strengths and weaknesses. That year our class was supposed to make two big bridges, but we did not. We did that in seventh grade. Speaking of which, seventh grade was very, very fun. Acer joined the class, and right away, Sylvie gave him a nickname. Ace Machine. I don't know where it came from, but it stuck. My highlight of that year was the canoe trip we did from the Union Fairgrounds down to Port Clyde. My, hi my highlight was playing soccer at every single recess, except for tackle football in the snow. We had our fair share of both teamwork and rivalry during those recesses. The end of seventh grade was getting closer, and eighth grade loomed over our heads. We needed to, to start thinking about our eighth grade projects. Our projects were an opportunity to showcase our individual strengths, talents, and interests. These projects forced us to learn responsibility in a whole new way. Most of us started to fall behind our timelines, but in the end, everybody pulled through. Eighth grade was all about both learning to work independently, but also still working as a class. 
working through real problems, real life problems, and not being afraid to ask for help. Being with each other for so long and understanding how each other, uh, how each of us learns differently, helps us see when one of us is struggling and helps us know how to assist them. I'm not the best at writing. I'm not so great at math. But we know that about each other and come to another's rescue when we're struggling. This only works out so well because we've known each other for so, so long. Our whole class, but especially the two of us. Practically our whole lives. This has helped us learn and shape our time at Ashwood. We are sad that this part of our lives is at an end. But we will see each other in the high school. Maybe Jack will be writing a paper for language arts. Maybe Sylvan will be studying for his math finals. And we now both know how to help each other. That's exactly what I will do. Me too. We first learned how to help each other from Miss Finlayson. So for that, we would like to thank you for all your hard work. Thank you to our classmates for not judging us when someone did not know an answer. Thanks to the faculty for making our education at Ashford a fun one. Thank, thank you. you.
presentation of the diplomas. <coughs> Jasper Berryman Moore. Class of 2017. 